occupied by just doing this. So. No, I'm going to take myself off of here. Um, so you talk to the people. I'm going to have it share your whole screen here. So you you go for it. Have fun. And if you need me, just holler. Okay, cool. Let me try to get my... It's kind of raining here, but isn't... The camera still looks pretty good, though, doesn't it? Yeah, no, it looks good. Okay, guys, as you're logging on, this is David Dodge. David, this is your show now, so take it away. All right, cool. All right, guys. We're going to do a little driving for dollars today in real time, real time. So I want to thank Elise for working with me and giving me some time to get all this set up. But um, I know that Deal Machine has lots and lots of bells and whistles. And they have a lot of cool features, a lot of which I don't know how to use that well. But I do like using this app. It's one of my favorite apps. I'm going to turn that Do Not Disturb on so we don't get blown up all afternoon here. And we're going to go, we're going to find some neighborhoods right around this area. I do a lot of driving for dollars in all different parts. Lately, I've been doing a lot up in this fluorescent area. I really love how they color coordinate the uh, the map with where I've been. It's one of my favorite tools. And it tracks your route, which is like the coolest thing ever. So for anybody that's like brand new, wanting to know, you know, what driving for dollars is, it's just a way to build a list on your phone while you're driving with the app and i like building my own list versus purchasing list because those lists would be essentially very unique to you and you only also you may not have a property that you know has a distressed seller per se but the property could be distressed so really though, I just, I'm going to go down this way because there's a lot of good houses over here. It's kind of rainy in St. Louis today, guys. A little overcast, but I know there's a lot of good houses down here. I used to work out at the gym right up here on the street. So again, what I'm looking for today though, is I'm going to be out. I'm going to probably do this for an hour or so, give or take. And Usually in an hour's time, I can plot anywhere from one to 300 properties. Now my goal is to just find as many properties as I can that I can market to. Maybe I can move my camera a little so I can not get dizzy here and look out the side of my car. Uh, but I like to find properties that are needing work, right? So the ones that have tarps on the roofs, they have broken down cars in the driveway. I like it when the landscaping's all everywhere and it needs trimming. I actually just got a property under contract this morning for five grand. I think I already got it sold for eight. So it's not a home run, but you know, a couple grand is a couple grand and I won't have any of my own money invested. And really I can do a lot of deals like that with, uh, with driving for dollars leads. Go around me, bud. So when you're driving for dollars, you want to be cognizant of the people around you. I have been in accidents driving for dollars. Look at this. I've been on a couple of these streets already. It's a one way. But it's been so long since I've done any driving for dollars right in this area. So this is actually really good. Now, I use the tap to add feature, guys. It's the quickest for me. Because on pin mode, I want to change it to tap to add mode. Because uh, my goal is volume. It's not necessarily getting pictures. I know that that's one of the cool features. And if you're doing a lot of mail, it's an amazing feature. You guys should definitely check that out. Let's go right here and see if we can. Right here. Oh, this looks like a commercial building. But doesn't look too bad right there. But basically, you know, there's a lot of features. And depending on what your goals are, it might be feature that you know really really works well for you my goal is to just plot a lot of property this is a nicer part of town than where i traditionally do my driving for dollars but that doesn't mean that it's not a great area i mean really i would like to have a team at every damn street in town if i could but 
quite honestly, I love doing it myself. Oh, there's a good one. They got stuff growing out of their gutters right there. With the tap to add feature, you just touch the map and it adds it, creates your list just like that. Um, again, you could skip trace in real time, and I do do that from time to time. At least I do that whenever I come across one that's like a fire damage one or it's just really bad. But I have a tendency to try to do multitasking, and, and it often is a bad thing. So really, what I what I mean by that is. I like to just drive for dollars and collect leads and then do my calling at another time. I'm going to point the camera over here to the left a little bit. This makes for a really good one, guys. Overgrown bushes. The front porch is being held on by some, some looks like some four by fours. Gutters are hanging off. Roof looks newer, but you know, there's got to be some reason, some reason why that property is a little distressed. Hey, look at that. I have one that one already so i've already flagged that one wow from it from an old route look at that so let's go over here in this area to the to the left to the top up here and try to get on some new territory so so far you know i've only been doing this five minutes i got one lead sometimes it takes a little while to get in the groove as well but i like that let's see if we can't get our camera to refocus here yeah i guess what i got stuff on the window it has to do that we're going to try to find some new territory i'm going to go straight and make a left and we'll kind of circle back on all these little back little switchbacks here but i'm again i'm looking for stuff that needs work i mean most of the property so my company is based out of st louis missouri i know that's where mr lecco i believe was raised and uh we we bought 100 houses last year. The year before, we bought another another 90. Essentially, I've been doing this full-time five years. And that's a good one right there. So this little button at the top right of your screen will kind of center you, get you in right where you want to be. So we're going to add that one. We're going to add this one. And as I'm driving up and down the street, I'm just looking at houses that could use work. So of the 100 houses we bought last year, 80 of them were vacant. 85, I think, even. So typically, you know, you're going to be dealing with vacants. And you got some on the right over here. What's this? 7728. That's a good one. We'll take it. And uh, sometimes you'll be dealing with tenants. But typically, the houses are vacant. And if you can see signs of a vacant house, like tall grass or gutters hanging up. I like seeing broken down cars in the driveway. That's usually a good sign that uh, they can't afford to fix those cars or that they're just having other issues and other problems. This area here that I'm in today is also kind of a unique area because the house values are a little higher than typical. Man, that is the skinniest house I think I've ever seen in my entire life. I'm going to back up you guys a view of this one. Holy cow. Look at that thing. It's the skinniest house I've ever seen. We're going to mark that one and make for a great rental. So the reason I like this area a lot, though, is not so much for fix and flips right here. Not so much for wholesales. Although, we can do that on all of these properties if we get a good deal. Uh, but these really make for good rentals, though, because the value of these properties right here in this little pocket of town that makes for a good one it's got all kinds of issues going on here you got windows that need to be repaired tall grass can't really see because my window the, the concrete's all chipped up so definitely just need some work here so we're going to zoom in on that one here and it looks like that's uh 24 76 24 but these make for good rentals because the the values of these homes are for the size is actually pretty high. It's good school district, low crime, and you can get really good rents. So getting in, oh, that's a real good one there. Maybe I can, uh, maybe I can go ahead and do that. Let's see here, that's 7615. All right, cool. But these make for really good rentals as well. But here's the thing about 
real estate investing. Guys, I have 65 rentals right now, about 80 or 90 doors. I don't count the doors, I count the roofs. I'm about 65 properties right now. And the thing is, is when we get a rental property or one that would make for a good rental, our goal is to use the bird strategy to close these are together here. Four, three. There it is. We use the burst strategy essentially to try to buy the house, fix it up, get a refinance after we rent it out, and get most of our money back. And we've done this about I don't know, a hundred times maybe, give or take, over the last two years. But we sell them off turnkey occasionally too. That's why we don't have a hundred rentals right now. We we do this and we keep good ones and we sell off other ones that have good equity. But really what I'm getting at though, we've had nine properties thus far. You guys should be able to see my phone on your screen. Uh, but really why I'm getting at this is because regardless of what you decide you want to do, rental property, fix and flip, wholesale, all of these start with getting a deal, like buying a property at a discount. So I have a podcast called The Discount Property Investor with my partner, Mike Slane. We've got about 200 episodes. And, you know, we're all things real estate. We, we love wholesaling, but it's a means to an end to us because it's a job. And our goal isn't to work forever. We want to acquire a bunch of assets and just get cash flow. We're going to go up here for the left here. We don't shoot the other down yet. But we love to cherry pick. We keep the best. We sell the rest. My buddy Ryan dossie has got a, a saying that's almost the same. It's, I love it. It's keep the best. Wholesale the rest. It's, it's basically what we do. We keep the best. We sell the rest. That looks like a good one. A couple in a row here. I don't know if these people all around me. 75, 14, and 28. And the one next to it. You guys can go right around me. And we got 30. And a couple in a row right here. I got 30 already marked, which is good. But guys, we buy the best. We buy, we, we make offers on everything, right? We're always buying at a discount. But our goal is to keep the best ones for ourselves. But what we, you know, whenever I say best, it could be a lot of different things. 75, 47 as well. I like that one. It could be best for the company right now, meaning that this could make for a great wholesale. Uh, it could be best, meaning this could be an easy fix and flip. It's close to the house, close to the office. It could be a fun project, easy project. Looks like this one down here could make for a good one. Maybe 6705 as well. And uh, we cherry pick them. But, you know, they all these things start with the deal to begin with we got a couple good ones right down here all would make for great rental properties and in fact i wouldn't mind cold calling cold texting all of these little houses right in this area but we buy these properties we make offers on them we keep the best we wholesale the rest this one here looks like let me see if i can't get you guys a good view of this one they got Got a good wall coming down right there, and they need a lot of paint. We've got traffic that we're dealing with here. That's going to make a good one there, and the one before it. And knock all three of these out, actually. They all look pretty good. But we got to start with the deal. And that's really, I keep getting sidetracked here because I'm driving. But basically, I tell this to a lot of my students as well. You know, if you don't have a deal on a piece of property, it's going to be very difficult. Oh, looks like my driving stopped. Started again. No big deal. Oh, not yet. It's going to. Line was missing. Um, you know, it's very hard to pay retail for a property and add value just by fixing it up. I mean, we do that every day, of course, but that's only part of the equation. I think a lot of people, they, that's one of the things that, you know, really throws them off in the beginning when they're starting out 
is they think they can just go get a property at, you know, five, maybe 10% below market. And that's great. It's better than paying retail, but you can get properties at 30, 40, 50% below retail, and you can do it really easy. You just got to market to these people. So when you get a property at 30 to 40, maybe 50% below retail, I got some decent little houses right here, but yeah, I wouldn't mind owning some of these rentals. So I'm actually going to park a couple right here. Actually, some good rentals. This one here. 18. Number 18 as well. Let's go to 16. When you buy something at 30, 40, you know, 50 cents on the dollar or percent off, I should say, at 70% down to 50% of its after repair value minus your repairs all of the doors of opportunity open for you oh, that's a good one there it's got a brand new roof on it but man they haven't trimmed the bushes in three years and it's this one here okay but you you got all the doors of opportunity open to you once you have a deal right if you decide you want to keep it rent it out fix and flip it wholesale it you have all of those options but when you are barely getting a deal select those two as well i do have some feedback for you guys every time i move my map and or select the property i have to reselect that little button at the top it'd be cool if i could move the map and then it would recenter after I select on one, but not complaining. No big deal. No, that's okay, David. <laughs> you could say that because we've we've heard it and we're working on it. I actually wanted to, I know you're driving. I don't want you to get an accent. So I wanted to read you some of these questions people are asking. Oh, yeah, let's, uh, let's do it. I'm, I'm good. I'm, I, I can do it. I also did post your podcast link. So everybody, just so you guys know, it's in the comments. If you guys want to go and check it out. I'm not here to promote. That's not my intentions, but people may not know who I am, and that's that's why I'm telling you guys that stuff. Yeah, no, and I fully appreciate you. And so, yes, in just so everyone knows, in the description, we'll be posting um, David's Instagram and podcast and any other ways you guys can connect with him. But um, let's see. Brian K. Bot asked, if you don't take pictures, are you mailing cards or contacting them a different way? Are you calling them? Yeah, so you can still mail without a picture, guys. That's a great question. I think the pictures are good in terms of like maybe getting conversions. Um, but again, I'm multitasking. And to me, you know, I can send a call. I can call somebody and or text them in bulk um, for much cheaper than mail. So quite honestly, I don't send a whole lot of mail unless it's somebody that I just can't get a hold of. You know, that's really the mailings that I typically do. Um, but, you know, there's no right or wrong answer. You know, I tell this to my students all the time. You know, there's 50 different ways to go about finding motivated sellers. And all of them work. Literally, all of them work. It's just how hard are you putting in the efforts to do those. Driving for dollars is one of my favorite ways to find deals. Again, those lists are going to be more unique. And we got a couple right here that I wouldn't mind buying. It's all three of those right there look like they could use some work old roofs old windows um taking pictures is a great thing you know by all means but it, to me it slows down the process if i'm going to go try to get 300 properties on my list and take 300 pictures of each one you know that just seems like it's more it's just more right again right. I'm not, don't do that if you like that it's gonna get you a higher response almost guaranteed when you're sending your mail I don't send a whole lot of mail. Go around me, lady. There you go. It's people sometimes. Uh, so again, yeah, like there's no right or wrong answer. I think the answer is just do something, right? Most people are like, oh, I want to get out and drive for dollars. And it's like, okay, it's not hard. Download an app and get your ass in the car. You know, it's, it's just take action, I think is my message here. So yeah. No, I love it. It's no, no BS. No BS. That's right. Um, 
I have Scott here who says that he was in Maplewood today oh, and nice. he's and he says, stay out of Webster. That's my territory. I think he was just, and he said, take a right on Big Bend. I'm not quite sure what all that is, but. Yeah, he, just, he wants me to go in an area that he's not buying stuff. So yeah. <laughs> um, and then I had, uh, oh shoot, I just had a question for you and now I forgot it. Um, oh, what are you, how are you picking out time when you're driving? Do you just, do you have a set number of hours you want to drive a week or anything like that? You know, I just have lately. So this is a good one here, guys. I don't know if you can see or not. It's raining. It's Ooh. but yeah, it's just ugly. Yeah. <laughs> freaking house, right? Those sometimes make it the one right next door. It looks like it's got, you know, newer paint. You guys can't see it. I'm sorry here. This damn rain. Um, but, you know, all three of these right here could make for good little wholesales, fix and flips, rentals, regardless. you got to get a deal, though. None of it matters. None of it matters. You know, you, if you can't get a deal on a property, you know, and Deal Machine is one of the best ways to, to plot those properties. And it's the most, it's the safest. I've been in two accidents driving for dollars. One, I hit somebody. And another time, a guy hit me. And oh both times, I was using a pen and paper. Oh, shoot. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So, you know, the app, I look at it like this, too, at least. I look at it like, man, this makes it safer. Yeah. You know, I have this mount up here that's holding the phone about five inches from my face. You guys can't see here, but I'm basically just, I got two hands on the wheel. And I'm looking out, and I'll just lift up my hand and move my map around or, you know, whatever I need to do. Look at all this yellow here. So what is this? What's the yellow line for? Is that that I've been that's over here that's six to 12 months. So that's half a year you haven't been through it. Perfect. So I'm going to, I mean, that's, that's pretty recent still. Look at the little pins guys on the map from me going through on these other, <laughs> on these, you know, this other drive for dollars. So, you know, that's too recent for me to want to rehit, but there's all this other area of the map up here that. Look at all that driving. <laughs> I know. And this is different little areas, right? So if you, if I scroll down to like kind of where I live here, oh, this is like, that's weird. Oh, look at all that green. So is, why is it, oh, it's probably because of this thing. Uh, I have to agree with you too, David. I use tap to add most of the time. And I, I do, I'm guilty of this. I just rely on my street pick feature because uh, I don't, I'm not patient enough to take the picture right when I find, holy crap, that looks like a... <laughs> Yeah, so I live in the middle of that right there. And a lot of this is done on my bicycle. Oh, you're kidding. Yeah, so I just like, so you asked earlier, Luis, and I'm really bad at like going off on tangents. I, I apologize now and in advance for doing it again and again and again. Um, but like, I don't, I mean, I'm, I'm lazy, just like most people. And I find it that if I'm laying on the couch for an hour or two watching some dumbass TV show, I'm like, man, I could be out driving for dollars right now. So I, I usually only go out, you know, maybe three times a week for like an hour or two, you know? But I, yeah, but you're adding a buttload of properties. Yeah, and I don't really plan it. So let's get back to where I am on my own map up here, this newer one. And then basically we need to go left to try to get out of this little yellow area. Uh, but, you know, I don't really plan it all that often. I just uh, say, you know what? I could be doing better stuff with my time. You know, maybe I should go to the gym right now versus laying on this couch. Maybe I should go out and do some D for D. And that's really kind of where I find myself, you know, doing the majority of my D for D is where I just start recognizing that I'm not being efficient with my time. So we buy a lot of houses. You know, we probably buy two, maybe three a week on average. I'd say, you know, 33%, probably three, three and three, like a third, a third, a third wholesale rehab rental. Uh, and it's just fun getting out and like sometimes you know I will use your guys those instant skip trace to get their number when I'm in their you know in their uh, driveway essentially yeah and, up and I'll just say hey you know this may sound weird but like I'm an investor and I buy properties for cash and I'm out just looking at properties in the neighborhood of where I may already own some and I noticed that yours you know looks like shit like, I'm not, I don't like trying to like make them feel good. You know, I just, like, this property looks like hell and I, I own a couple in the area. I am always interested in buying them to fix the, the area, but also to increase the value of the 
properties that I already own. You know, and I'm not trying to be rude, but like, I don't hold back. And I'd be like, you have interest in selling it. And that's it. That's the secret. You know, people, people spend thousands and thousands of dollars on coaching programs. Just, you know, mm-hmm. like, pick up the phone, make the call. It's not hard. You got to do it, you know? And, uh, but yeah, it really, really helps. So I would say the main feature though, that I use the app for really is just, it's, it's safety. You guys may be yeah. laughing, but it's safety. It's because I can just drive and I don't have to come to a complete stop unless I want to. And I can plot on the map. And my goal again is to get two to 300 properties in an hour's time. I'm at, I'm at, it looks like, you know, 20 minutes. I'm at 15. I'm also talking to you guys. So I'm kind of, yeah. <laughs> but Hey, there's one right there that I want to get. Right. And then from there, um, I'll export the, the leads and, um, you know, send them over to my team, just skip trace and cold call or cold text. That's the most efficient way. And then when we can't get a hold of them, that's when we will do mail. Uh, but you know, here's the thing. I also have a team, Elise, and I know a lot of people don't. So, yeah. you know, if you're a solo entrepreneur or an investor, that's just you or just you and your wife or partner or whoever, you know, it may not make sense to do what I do. And that's what I, I, I'm always like reiterating. There's no right or wrong way, guys. There's, you have options. Okay, look at this. There's two, three, four houses that I would love to own right there. Boom. And you just, you added them like right, right there. Right there. Boom. Just like that. Yep. And then this, uh, this one over here, looks like a good one. It can use a driveway. So I'm also looking for properties too, that, that, you know, the, well, a, I'm always, I'm only, I'm only buying at a discount. Like I will never pay above eighty percent, and that's in the nicest areas of town. Typically, I'm averaging about sixty-five to seventy percent of the value of the property. So that's that's really where it starts, guys. You've got to be a discount property investor, right? You got to buy at a discount. But what I'm also looking for when I'm not driving for dollars is easy things that I can do to add value once I buy it. Because again, mm-hmm. whenever you know, we're buying our, our, our properties that we're going to end up keeping. This is a good one there. It's a good one there. We want to be able to just, you know, typically do three or four things to increase the value versus fully rehabbing. So like, for instance, if I can buy a property that has a gravel driveway, it needs a roof and windows, but everything else is pretty good. Like to me, that's a home run because I can make three phone calls. Hey, I need a roof. I need some windows and I need somebody yeah. to come over here and either like put in a driveway or do a top coat and boom. So now I've increased the value of that property. My wipers are going a little crazy here, guys. Uh, I've increased the value of that property, but I've done it with the least amount of effort. You know, if I got to go in and redo kitchens and baths, that's fine. We'll do that. But, you know, that takes a lot of time. It slows down the process to get paid. if If you are rehabbing it, it slows down the process of refinancing it because you know, your banks are typically going to want the property to be either in the leasing process or even leased for a couple months, depending on your banker and the seasoning requirements that they may have. So I think the message here, guys, is, you know, there's no, there's no secret. Just get out, do some driving for dollars, use the app. There's features that may work better for you than me. And again, there's no right or wrong answer, but you know, make offers. Like that's another problem that people that people have is they'll do marketing, they'll do the cold calling, they'll do the cold text, and they will even do the driving for dollars to generate their own leads. But then they come to me and they say, "Hey, I got two thousand leads," and I'm like, "Well, how many people have you talked to? How many offers have you made?" And it's like, okay, well, you know, getting the leads is only half the battle. Maybe maybe less, right? You gotta make offers. So, my team, you know, we're typically trying to make anywhere from three to five written offers a day. And whenever we, we have uh, two virtual assistants, one that does cold calling all day and one that does cold texting all day. And each one of them is, you know, instructed whenever you're on the phone with somebody and they have any interest at all in selling, this is how easy our offer process is, guys. You're going to laugh. But I want them to make an offer at 60 to 70%, and it's a range offer. It's not a fixed number. So let's say a property has an ARV of 100 grand. And, you know, we don't even know how much work it needs, right? But let's say that the seller is motivated to sell it. So in order for us to see how motivated they are, my virtual assistant will be instructed to make an offer at 60 to 70 grand, somewhere in that range, or just basically say, 
hey, we're buying similar properties in the area that are, you know, right, right down the road, similar size, similar square foot. And we're paying between 60 and 70 grand, depending on how much work it needs. You know, are we in the ballpark? And if they're like, oh, no, I need to get at least 85 or 90 grand. Well, it's like, okay, next. No problem. Can we file with you later? Maybe, maybe not. But that's really what their job is, is to get out there and just try to find those that are motivated. And then if the repairs are crazy, then obviously we'll offer even less. But I don't really want to go on an appointment, you know, or send one of my people out on an appointment. I'm going to go left here so we can get back in this little neighborhood. Uh, I don't even really want to go on an appointment, you know, if I don't see some level of motivation. So the virtual assistants are making several offers an hour, each of them, every day. So in theory, I mean, we might be making 40 or 50 offers every day. But we're trying to send three to five in writing. That's kind of the goal. We don't always hit it at least. Sometimes we will get that number. Sometimes we won't. You know, some days we'll do even more. But, you know, one of my mentors told me when I first started out that the number of offers you make is directly correlated to the amount of money that you can make in the real estate business. And man, was he right. You know, because if you can go out and get a couple good prop, good, good, good deals on property, you don't even need to have any money in your bank account. You can wholesale those money, those properties, right? And use your investor partner cash buyer's money to, to sell those properties. And again, you have other options. You can rehab, you can rent. Well, so my thing, my thing was you mentioned the burr, which um, David, our other David has done, num I think on most of his properties. Could you tell people kind of what that's about? Yeah, absolutely. So the BRRRR strategy is, uh, it's just an acronym, guys. I actually just wrote a book. Again, I'm not here to promote Elise, but I, I just wrote a book on this. No, promote it. I'm going to go find it now. Yeah, so it's on the Amazon Audible. I, I've written two books. The first one was called The Ultimate Guide to Wholesale and Real Estate. And it's basically everything I do to, do, to buy 100 houses a year. Here. So, uh, The second book. All right, looks like we're back. I don't know if I lost you guys there or not. Yeah, no, you're back now. Okay, second, I got the first book. What's the second book? Sorry about that. I was in a little little area there. Okay, so the, the second book is called The Burr Method. Straightforward, The Burr Method. And um, The Burr Method is a simple strategy, guys, that we use to acquire assets with little to no money. So what it stands for, and the book's called The Burr Method, and what it stands for is buy, renovate, or rehab. That's our second R. Um, rent out, refinance, repeat. So this is a good one right here. What is that little address? 3111, 3115. Oh, I'll buy 3109 too. I'll get all of these. These are good. So now I'm starting to get a couple leads in my thing here, up to 30. So the Burr method is uh, buy, renovate or rehab, rent out, refinance, repeat. And I was saying earlier, it's very difficult to, to get enough equity in a property to leave none of your own money in it just from updating it. Let's go right over here and find some new neighborhoods. Um, so buying it at a discount is, is crucial to the Burr method. I mean, it's, it's basically where it all starts. If you 
If you're buying something at retail or at a slight discount, the Burr method is going to be a very difficult method for you to be able to refinance all of your money on. So when we first started this, at least, we've done about 100 of these, right? Uh, we were leaving in, you know, 15, 10 to 15 grand per property. And uh, we've gotten that average down to about a thousand or less that we leave in. Sometimes we'll walk uh, with money. So how this process works, guys, is you buy the property with cash or hard money. I actually bought a house right around the corner here. Let's make a right and then we'll go left on some of these little side streets. So you buy a house at a discount. That's the thing. You can't you can't buy it at retail. You gotta buy it at a discount. And you then update that property. So you're doing a double wham. I gotta see if this one was on my list because I wholesaled this house literally three weeks ago and we made about 10 grand and it wasn't on here. So it wasn't a driving for dollars lead, but you guys can see it. Nice. Just we'll say that little green piece of, piece of crap right there. <laughs> we made about 10 grand. Uh, back to the and how many how many partners do you have, David? I got two partners. Um, <laughs> two partners, and one of one of them kind of manages the rehabs. The other one kind of manages the rentals. And my job is just acquisitions, leads, managing some of the virtual assistants. I like running appointments, so I'm not in. I'm not. I'm not very big on virtual wholesaling. I think it's great those who those who do it and can figure it out. Uh, but me, I'm just, I like getting out, meeting people, looking at properties. And, uh, you know, to me, it all, it all has a means to an end as well, at least. So it's like, you know, I love wholesaling because it keeps the marketing going. It keeps leads coming in, but it is a job. You know, it's, it's a, it's a means to an end for me. And that means to an end is to get up to about 150 properties and, uh, you know, have a good amount of passive income coming in. So back to the bird method. I keep getting sidetracked. Told you I do that. Story of my life. Don't even worry about it. Right. That's right. So we buy them at a discount. That's half of the battle, right? The other half of the battle is updating that property. Now, when we're doing the Burr method, we're typically doing 10 to 15 grand minimum updates. And uh, so between buying at a discount and adding 10 to 15 grand minimum updates, the goal would be to get 20. 20 plus percent equity or maybe even 25 percent i gotta talk to these folks right now. hey you guys selling you already sold it hey i'm gonna give you one of my cards you said let me get your number in case anything falls through here you guys probably can't see empty in the house okay cool well, let me know if it doesn't sell for any reason i'll buy it from you guys have a great day Thank you. And really, you gotta just be you gotta just be nice and talk to people, guys. That's we come across deals all the time when we're out looking at properties and the neighbors walk outside, you know, or just anything and everything. So this is a good Oh my there. gosh, that was brilliant. I feel like that's what people they get in the analysis process. The most thing I hear is do you have a call script or like how do you talk to sellers? And it's like just talk to them like they're human beings. Talk to them like they're your neighbor or a human being, right? Like Man, I am the anti-call script guy, I tell you. And it's not because I don't believe in them. I just feel like, you know, if you can make a friend, you, you're going to be able to solve problems. You're going to get what you want. So it's right. like, you know, if you are foreign or, you know, brand new, maybe that's fine. I get it. But if you have half a brain, just talk to people, you know, just say hello and, I'm, and tell them your intentions. So this one looks good right here, 6725. Where's that at? Why can't I see that? It's a 20, 25, 23 and 29. Well, that's weird. I'm looking at it. How is it not on there? Oh, well, I'm going to just hit all three of them and we'll get it some way or that way. Some way, shape or form, right? So David, what, um, what have you done if someone's like come out? I mean, I, I know what your answer is probably going to be, but like so many people are like, oh, what if someone comes out and they're angry that I'm like in front of their house and they see me taking a picture and all this stuff? Like, so I, I think don't have photos, so I don't have that problem, but if they come out, save yourself the mail, 
just say, hey, I was taking a photo because I really want to buy this property. This one looks good. It's got a lot of weeds. I can't even see the front door. There's so many weeds in the way. Holy. A good one. Um, but, you know, I just say, hey, I was just going to send you a postcard. I was taking a photo because I was going to put it on the postcard. You know, I'm Dave or Bill or Jim or Elise, and, you know, I'm, I'm buying houses. Like, don't overthink it, guys. What the, what's the worst thing that can happen? They say, they say, Graham, come on. That's nothing. You can, you can overcome that. So, yeah. What, yeah. um, where should people, like, if they want to contact you, what's the best way to contact you? Like, through Instagram or? Yeah, Instagram, most likely. 6550, what does that say? Going the right, yeah, 50, 65, 56. Where do I see that at? 65, 56. Backwards. That's weird. Huh. Are you having issues? What's backwards? 65, 43. No, there it is. I'm just half retarded. That's all. It's no, all. I was like, I'm going to get on the CS line right now. No, 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 you're good. I sometimes I just, you know, how it goes. Okay, so then, yeah, there's some good ones on this street. I'll take that one. I love this because I can literally just drive around and I just say, hey, I would like to buy that house, right? <laughs> it is a numbers game, guys. This is a numbers game. Sometimes when I see houses that have for sale signs in them, while I'm out, I'll call them and I'll make verbal offers to the agents and I'll get hung up on probably nine times out of ten. Not literally, but you know how it goes. But, you know, my offer is 60 to 70% of, like, either the Zestimate or the prop stream number, which I really, really like the prop stream value, uh, or just the asking price if it's listed. Listed properties, I would say we buy one out of 20. So out of 100, out of 100 properties that we buy a year, we're typically only buying, you know, five off the MLS. They do exist. This one looks great. It's so far back. You can't even see the house. Oh, camera angle. I was going to say, I think I see like a roof and that's yeah. about it. <laughs> that's going to be a good one there. So we're gonna see how far back it is on the map. Oh yeah. Yeah. All the other ones. And it looks like it needs a ton of work too. So that's going to be a good one here. Um, yeah. I mean, it just, the, the, the main thing is you got to get a deal guys. That's really where it starts. So back to Burr though, you, you buy it at a discount. That's required. I don't, you can't buy anything not at a discount, guys. If you're watching this and you're not making offers 20% below market, please start. <laughs> it's going to jumpstart your investing career, I can promise you, because your deal spreads will get bigger and the possibility of, you know, there's another way to look at it. I don't like buying deals that I could, that I could lose money on. So if I can calculate it in, so like these two right here, are great little multis. I would love to own those two multis. They both have chip and paint, and they need windows. Love it. Just love it. Um, so when you're buying properties, you got to get them at a discount. That's where it all starts. So one way that I look at it is, am I getting it at a discount enough where I could do nothing and list it on the MLS and break even? Like that's literally one of my criteria when I'm buying a property. And if I couldn't do that, then I'm offering too much. So I need to bring that offer amount down a lot. So this is a good one here, guys. Can you see the weeds in that yard over there across the way? Oh, yeah, the forest. Yeah, so like, you know, and that's it. Like, there's no, so we're going to get that one. We're going to back this up a little bit here. And we're going to click on our app. Now, I do have to ask you, David, do you pull lists as well? We're going to do that one, that one, that one, that one, that one, that one, all of these. These all look like great little rentals. Yeah, I do pull lists. I just get them from PropStream just because I'm already using it. Yeah, no, yeah. Well, I have, so with, since we have um, List Engine coming out, I hear a lot, this is just for people in general, but like, what would you suggest when people are saying like, what are the best lists to pull? Like, where do they start? That's a great question. And before I answer that, I gotta get this one right here. See you guys, this is real time driving for dollars. <laughs> That's right. That's right. This is a good one, right? How do you here. even get into the house? You have right to climb here. through the trees. Uh, Twenty-two. So this is, uh, I guess, it would be one of these three. But they all look like they could use some work. We're just gonna hit all three. Um, 
So what was your question, Elise? I'm sorry. No, no, you're good. I was saying a lot of people are asking, like, what are the best lists to pull or where do you start or how do you know what kind of oh, list yeah, to pull? Great, great question. Great question. So, you know, I don't overthink it. You know, you can you can get like I, like I was saying earlier, you know, all marketing works. Just are you doing enough of it? You guys right. see the, peeling off the siding over there on that white one? Probably not. Uh, uh huh. <laughs> looks a little, a little bit, rough. A little bit. Yeah, it just looks like it could use some work. Really, like all of these right here, where is them all? They all could use work. This is a good street here. Get some deals. Um, but pulling the list, all of them work. So I said earlier, 85 houses out of 100 that we buy are vacant. So what does that tell you? Yeah. Vacant houses, guys. Vacant houses are going to be huge. You know, high equity is a filter that I rarely leave off rarely okay There's really no reason to leave off because if they don't have 30 percent equity how are they going to sell me that property on at a discount without uh bringing money to the table now people will bring money to the table we've had it done you know 30 times probably over the last five years um we've had one we've, we had one week where we had two sellers bring 40 grand plus to the table to sell properties to us in one week so it definitely wow. happens it's just going to be, you know, more rare than um, those who have 30 grand or have 30 percent worth of equity to where they can sell the property without bringing money to the table. So to get back to your question, though, or, you know, to, to the conversation about the list, I think vacant absentee owned high equity is the bread and butter list Okay. for that list. I don't care. Continue to market to it. Right. I mean, that's where the deals come from. Um, and then, of course, you have all your niche lists. You got your death, divorce, disease, probate, code violations. You know, all that stuff is good as well. But at the end of the day, typically it's tired landlords or it, it's just somebody that has a vacant property for whatever reason and they don't want to deal with it anymore. So. That's, that's literally one of my postcards that like, I think the second one I send out says like, are you a tired landlord? That's the first thing I see. <laughs> right. Right. Um, so I do have, I have this time for about eight minutes left. I want people to know, um, like I've been trying to figure out a good question that's like over encompassing. If you were starting over again, you know, starting in real estate investing, you know, everyone's hearing like you were talking about, you know, coaches and doing this and doing that and doing all this stuff. If you had to go back, what would you say, would you tell like yourself starting out in this business? That's a great question. So when I first started out, I, I was like, you know, cold calling people on Zillow and Craigslist, which is a great way to do it. But I was only doing it for like 20 minutes a day and I wasn't making any offers. And I basically tried, oh, here we go, guys. Here's some more deals. Uh, basically yeah. tried the wholesale for like three months. And I had a couple deals under contract, but nothing really panned out. And I hired a coach. So quite honestly, like, I think my advice would be if I could go back would be, hey, don't stick around for three months. Just hire somebody who's doing this already, knows what they're doing. And, you know, you're paying them for speed. You know, and here's another thing. Like, don't be disappointed if you hire a coach and they tell you everything you know already. That's even more reason to hire a coach. So reinforce that shit in your head. Pardon my language. No, you're That's good. The truth, though, because I think a lot of people get, they get really up, not upset, but they get like, um, you know, they get unmotivated and they're like man this coach is telling me the shit i already i already know well that's fine but are you doing knowing mm -hmm. is thing. doing is another are you doing and a good coach will get you know will hold you accountable to do those things man i'm getting all kinds of good deals back here guys <laughs> <laughs> doing this while i'm driving it's great. um so yeah i think that advice would would be at least it would be um you know don't wait to get a coach just find somebody that knows what they're doing and it'll speed up the whole process. So when I hired a coach, he was like, David, you're, you're, there's only two ways to get a deal at the end of the day. You call them or they call you. That's yeah. it. There's a million ways to get them to call you. There's a million different ways of you going about calling them with different you know, lists and softwares and 
But at the end of the day, that's it. You got to call them or they got to call you. So if you're only committing 20, 30 minutes a day and you're calling a couple landlords, oh, yeah, we got to show you guys this one. And it's going to take you five, six, seven months. That's just the facts. Yeah. Right here, guys. I don't know. Oh, nice. Again, it's kind of hard to see with the rain, but. Yeah, but they. But it just, it just looks like they haven't touched the outside in a year or two. So we're going to do this one in that one. It won't look pretty good. Um, so, oh, come on. There we go. Um, so I would tell myself, hey, you know, get, get a coach. Do it now because it's going to speed up that curve. So my coach said, hey, you know, if you are only calling X number of people a day, then you need to buy marketing that gets your phone ringing. And quite right. honestly. That's what I wanted to do anyway. I didn't really want to do all that cold calling. I still do it, but I outsource it now. I have virtual assistants that do cold calling and cold texting anywhere from 20 to 40 hours a week. That's a good one. That's a good one. That's a good one. All three of these guys. I'll, why not that one on the corner too? All right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, you know, another thing is whenever I'm doing this uh, and I'm adding just random properties like that, you know, it's like you don't know if they're motivated or not. Who cares? It's just another lead in the in the pipeline, you know? Yeah. Uh, but anyway, my first coach, and I'll drop his name because he's a friend. His name is Joe McCall. He's a great guy. He taught me that this is the marketing business. And that's really what this business is. This is the marketing business. Look at this front yard, guys. Can you see that? Oh, my. Like that that's the- definitely a code violation. <laughs> I'm like, does it get any better driving for dollars? <laughs> I mean, come on, right? I'm writing down minutes of when you get really good ones that you show us so people can just skip to them too. Oh, yeah, perfect, perfect. So I think this is that one there. Yeah, okay. I mean, come on, that's a great one right there. Um, but so anyway, Joe, my coach, he was like, hey, you know, and he was like, let's get you some postcards out. So we pulled like a vacant or an absentee list and, um, we sent out about 2,000 postcards, and man, my phone started ringing. All right. I was addicted. And I was like, this is the coolest thing ever. And I didn't cold call for like a year because I was just buying it. And, you know, and that's another thing that I want to make it very clear to people, right? You can flip properties with little to no money. I've done it 450 times, right? You can do it very, very simply, very easily. But the leads aren't free they don't come simply they don't come easily you gotta either buy them like meaning you have to spend money on marketing or you have to get off your ass and you have to pick up the phone and start making calls or go out and drive for dollars it's time or money and in most cases both yeah oh i'm driving for dollars right now and i'm gonna send these leads to my virtual assistants to, to skip trace cold call cold text i'm still out doing spending time on it right Mm-hmm. So typically going to have both, but you know, and that's one of the things I don't consider myself to be a guru by any means. I'm kind of more of the anti-guru, even though I do have a coaching you know program and I work with students. But with that being said, I make it very clear. You know, you don't need money to flip. You can control properties with contracts and you don't need money to do that, but you need money and or time. You need a budget. Call it this. Look at it this way. At least you need a budget. That budget can be made up of time, money, or both, ideally both. But that's what you need to get into wholesaling. Wholesaling isn't, isn't real estate investing. You know, it's it's marketing. So driving for dollars is just a way to get those leads to then determine, hey, can I get a good enough deal on this to where I can wholesale or, you know, do whatever else that it is that you decide that you want to do. But you got to get a deal. That's the thing. Nothing matters if you don't get a deal. You're basically – just going into a project or a deal with massive amounts of risk. And the best way to reduce risk is to pad it in, you know, buy it at a minimum of 30 cents on the dollar. I'm sorry, 30 cents off, 30% off. So 70 cents on the dollar. I know that can be confusing guys. I'm sorry about that. (laughs) Uh, But that's, that's the thing. If you buy something at 30 cents on the, or 30% off, 30 cents on the dollar, there is no reason you can't make money on that. Yeah, you may have to rehab it, maybe. Um, we have Jeff asked uh, just because I want to make sure I get this question. And Jeff asked, "How? Who do you use for a VA cold call, cold text, etc.? Like, how did you find your VAs?" Great question. So, 
go on to Facebook and go into virtual assistant real estate groups. There's five or six of them. One of them's got like 30,000 people in it. Go in there and, and, and most of those 30,000 people are VAs. And post it. Yeah. I prefer virtual assistants to do real estate. I'm, I prefer one that's done it already. And, and then give them um, a list of things to do to qualify. So basically I would say, I want you to email me your resume here. And then I want you to go to Instagram and message me that you sent it. And you're going to have a hundred people comment on your post. You're going to have 10 people email you and you're going to have two people email you and message you. And there you go. You got two really good virtual assistants that know how to follow freaking directions. <laughs> that's it, guys. That's it. Don't overthink it. That's it. That's, that's all there is to it. So just do that. I love it. And they can, so um, I just want to make sure before we end this, but your coaching program is on, I think I saw it on the DPI site, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, you can find, so we, we have a course that we offer with, uh, that we offer for free. Two of them actually. One of them is called free wholesale course. And we teach you how to wholesale. And the other one is called free landlord course. We teach you how to burr, teach you how to buy rehab, I'm going to park here for a second and just kind of go back to my, go ahead and wrap this up here, but I'm going to give you guys a change. My, oh, here we go. Let's see. Cam, Mike, and we're going to go. Oh, actually, before I do that, let's end my drive. So we're going to stop drive, stop driving. I love this part. This gives us some data, guys. This is really important um, to kind of see what's going on and what we're doing here. Looks like I added 96 leads. I said 100. Holy crap. 100 and 300 is kind of the goal. <laughs> leads. I did it for about 42 minutes. And then the, the miles driven never works, but that data is really irrelevant. I don't know why you, why we would even need that, but. Uh, I will say that um, I tell people for their drivers to get 15 to 20 and people say 15 to 20, that's a lot. I'm going to show them this video now. <laughs> Oh yeah, so here you go, guys. Actually, let me try something real quick. So we're gonna go. Hi. Hey, this is David. All right, it's me. We're gonna go to this and this, and then we can move this. Oh, that didn't work. Oh, here's what I want to do. I want to click that little button, and then click this. There we go. David, you're so I'm fancy. Trying, I'm trying to learn. I'm trying to learn. All right, there you go, guys. So 96, 96 properties, uh, five and a half miles. It did show that on there, which is cool. And then it'll uh, it'll plot those. So you know all that all that would be color coded with this green line of where I drove. You can see I kind of did a little catty wampus because I was talking. I wasn't paying attention. But typically I would go back and forth. You know, kind of like I did here or up here in Brentwood by my office, which has been a while since I've done it. You know, so on and so forth. But uh, yeah, that's it, guys. Pretty simple. Um, well, we'll make sure all of this is linked. And thank you so much again for doing this. I really, really appreciate it. Hey, my pleasure. I, I wish that, it, that I could do it more because it is kind of cool with all the cameras, but the setup's kind of a pain in the ass. But if you want to do it again soon, I would love to do it with you. Uh, yes. Yeah, absolutely. So, guys, do check out uh, free wholesale course and free landlord course, though, if you want to learn. You know how to get started i mean really the thing is is take action you know um if you're not driving for dollars building your leads then you need to be buying those leads right and you need to start marketing and that marketing can be in the form of you doing something outbound or it can be in the form of you buying your message you're basically paying to get your message out there for other people to see and then they call you so that's that's all there is to it. Make offers though. That's the thing. Like, you know, getting somebody to, to realize that this is a marketing business is relatively easy. Getting them to actually start marketing also relatively easy. Getting them to start making offers on every property they talk to, every seller, you know, following up on those properties. That's, I think, where the biggest breakdown takes place in this industry between the people that are doing lots of deals, doesn't matter if you're wholesaling, rehabbing, buying rentals, irrelevant. A deal's a deal. If you're doing a lot of deals, those people guaranteed are making a shit ton of offers. And the people that are, you know, trying to dab, dabble their feet in this business or just try to do it part time, you can be 
you know, wildly successful doing this part time. But you got to make offers. You got to make offers to people. And if you're not making offers, you're not going to get anything under contract. And if you know anything about wholesaling, you've got to have a product to, to market to sell, right? It's like inventory. You've got to have inventory on your shelves to be able to, to sell it. So I think yeah. making offers is literally, at least, it's the number one thing that people are struggling with. They're afraid to make offers. They don't know how to make offers. You know, and at the end of the day, it can be just, hey, I see the property's worth, you know, or will be worth 100. That's the ARV. Would you take 60 to 70 for it, depending on the repairs? That's just kind of my ballpark. I'm going to need to tell you more when I get there. But if that's something that you would consider, great. I'm, I'm literally on my way. You just give me the address. I'll be there in an hour, right? If they don't, well, I'm spinning my wheels. Right. I can't buy it at retail. I got to get that discount. So if you're watching this, you know, that would be the one takeaway that I would really want you to have here is you have to understand that you got to get a discount and uh, you have to demand it, right? But at the same time, you have a lot to offer these people. You know, like when I talk about, you know, wholesaling specifically, not just real estate investing, we're the liquidity makers, at least. That's all That's all we do. We come in and we provide liquidity. The average property takes three, four months to sell. We can maybe do it in three or four weeks. Yeah. And, and we, we literally are exchanging convenience for a discount. That's it. That's all we got. And what does our convenience look like? It looks like cash, quick, and as is. So the simplest breakdown that I can give, you know, of, uh, of marketing for, for deals or wholesaling is know your value. You have the ability to close it quick, cash, and as is, even if it ain't your cash. And in return, demand a discount. Because if you're not demanding a discount, you're spinning your tires. And that's it. That's all I got. I love it. Thank you so much, David. We will do this again soon.